Straight ahead on WVU News, Volkswagen has cheated millions of its customers in a recent scandal. I'm Shalee Ingram, and coming up next, I'll show you how students from a lab at WVU uncovered it all. Coming up on WVU News, I'm Kaylee Gunderson, and I'll tell you what WVU officials are doing to secure our campus in the event of a shooting. I'm Lauren McMillan, and coming up on WVU News, I'll tell you why minors are fighting to save their livelihood. Our Emmy Award-winning WVU News starts now. WVU researchers recently uncovered a scandal that rocked Volkswagen and its consumers. I'm Emily Swecker. And I'm Paige Madden. There have been over 74 school shootings in the past 18 months. I'll tell you what students should know to stay safe here at WVU. These stories and more on WVU News, an Emmy Award winning newscast produced by television journalism students right here at West Virginia University. In the wake of several school shootings throughout the nation, students are feeling unsafe on their campuses. Reporter Kaylee Gunderson joins us in the studio to tell students what they should know in case of an emergency. Thanks, Paige and Emily. Within the past month, Oregon, Texas, and Arizona have faced tragedy. The school shootings have left several dead and many injured. Colleges are required by federal law to provide safety protocol on campus, but not all students are aware of the policies. I found out what WVU officials would like you to know to be prepared in case tragedy strikes close to home. The tragic events of University of California, Santa Barbara, Virginia Tech, and now Umpqua Community College all pose a question for students. What if there was a shooting on your campus? That's not something, obviously, anyone wants to think about. I'd be pretty shocked, just because I feel like not much violence happens. Like, you never really hear about violent things happening at WVU. I think we need to continue to promote positivity on our campus, focus on the good. Fortunately, WVU has not faced this act of violence, but university officials still aim to train students on how to respond most effectively in the reality of a shooting. Once you know what to do, uh, knowledge will replace fear, and that's what we want. We want people to not go into fear and lock up. We want you to take action and protect yourself and others. In 2015 alone, there have been 17 shootings on college campuses, and in an average year, over 32,000 Americans will die from gun violence. While the motives behind pulling the trigger are not clear, Dr. Al Kasperwick says that cultural background and mental state are the most prominent factors of a mass shooting. A lot of the strategies and the tactical approaches to an active shooter on campus have less to do with can we stop it or prevent it from happening, but if something like this were to occur, could we respond effectively enough to diminish its impact? WVU offers online training on how to react to these situations and how to recognize if someone does have mental illness. Students can also contact University Police to schedule an active shooter training course where WVU Police will teach you how to respond if faced with a campus shooting. Paige and Emily, back to you. Thanks, Kaylee. Its stock price has already plunged 50%. Its reputation has been damaged, and its CEO recently resigned. We're talking about the Volkswagen scandal and how a small group of researchers here at WVU brought down a billion-dollar company. Shalia Engram joins us now in the studio with more. Shalia? Thanks, ladies. In case you missed the details, last month the EPA dropped a diesel bombshell, revealing that Volkswagen cheated 11 million customers into thinking they were driving environmentally friendly cars. Now the world's biggest car maker is rocked by the biggest scandal in its 78 year history. And it all started right here with scientists at WVU. Around 11 million Volkswagen cars worldwide on the road at this very moment are rigged with emission masking software. This means consumers were unaware that the amount of toxic fumes being released into the air from the cars they have been driving is up to 1 million tons of nitrogen oxide every year. Uh, we Double checked, triple checked our systems and our and our and our calculations, and found that yeah we were at indeed confident in the, the numbers that we were seeing. So that's when we realized that we were seeing off-cycle emissions. Carter says his research team received a fifty thousand dollar grant to measure smog created by three types of cars: a BMW SUV, a Volkswagen Jetta, and a Passat. When we took the vehicle on the road, 
we found that the emissions were really high, you know, 10 to 20 times or 30 to 40 times higher, which is not in the same magnitude as we would see the difference between a vehicle operating on the road versus a vehicle that passed emissions testing. The scientists reported their findings to the EPA in May of 2014 using a device like this one to test emission systems in diesel cars. Their research uncovered that Volkswagen had installed an emission masking device, which was cheating buyers worldwide. Longtime consumers like Demi Sadak says her family owns five Volkswagen vehicles, and this was quite a surprise. My mom has a diesel uh, Volkswagen. It's a Jetta. Um, so for her, this really matters, and she really looks into what cars are made of and like what goes into them, and if it's going to help because she wants to erase her green footprint. So what's next for this small but powerful team of researchers? We're proud of, of, of you know, what our graduate students have done here. Uh, we anticipate that, that you know, we'll be involved in the, in the future testing. Um, we hope that you know, we're sending students out to industry. And for now, Volkswagen claims it will fix the emission cheating software that was installed in its diesel cars between 2009 and 2015. The company may have to pay up to $18 billion in fines to the EPA. And here's the latest news on the ongoing scandal. Movie star Leonardo DiCaprio has just signed on as a producer of a movie being made on this controversy by Paramount Pictures. Thanks, Shalia, for that report. From solving problems to creating them, several coal mines across the nation are filing bankruptcy, and it's the miners who are feeling the effects. Reporter Lauren McMillan recently joined the thousands of miners who rallied in Morgantown to keep their health and retiree benefits, something they say they all earned after dedicating their lives to the coal mines. Over 1,500 active and retired miners gathered with the United Mine Workers of America to rally around legislation that would save their health care and retiree benefits. We earned this. Nobody gave it to us. We earned this for our wives when we got older. But most of this money is being denied to miners as companies are trying to abandon those contracts through bankruptcy. UMWA officials say this is another attack on the coal industry. The people who crashed the country's economic bus, who caused this downturn, they got bailed out. We didn't. We got left behind. The Coal Health Care and Pensions Protection Act has received bipartisan support with Congressman David McKinley and Senator Joe Manchin as lead sponsors, but it's never been able to pass both the House and Senate. So many people don't even understand how the country became the strength that we are today. It's because of the sacrifice made by so many of those men and women who mine the coal that made the, uh, the build the uh, factories that we have, that made the steel, that built the guns and ships, that did everything for us. Both bills would move money from the mine reclamation fund and use it for health care and pensions. Meanwhile, miners want Congress to keep their promise and they're not backing down. There's no doubt we're going to fight. We've always fought. We've fought for everything we've got, and we'll fight till we die to keep it. The UMWA will hold four other nationwide rallies. Lauren McMillan, WVU News, Morgantown. From a rally with thousands of minors to one woman's rally for the rights of sex workers. Award-winning author and College of Media professor Allison Bass recently unveiled her new book, Getting Screwed, which gives a deeper look into prostitution. At her recent book launch, Bass introduced her readers to the life of sex workers. Her book aims to shatter the stereotypes of women in this profession. The stories that she and other um, sex workers told me clash with the popular narrative of prostitutes of being all drug addicted, uh, victimized women who are forced into the trade uh, by traffickers or pimps. Um, that's simply not true. Bass examines the impact of the law on prostitution and pushes for its legalization. You can find the book in stores or online at Amazon. Paige, did you know that 65% of our drinking water comes from rivers and lakes? But that water might not be as healthy as you think. Audrey Koontz joins us now from Social Square with the latest in social media and pop culture news. Audrey? Thanks, Paige and Emily. Students are testing the water quality in Morgantown and using social media to help. The Streamlab is focused on raising awareness of regional water quality and are going to Facebook and Twitter to share the results. Alyssa Aquavella explains. WVU Streamlab project is releasing six sensors into the Mon River, and media innovator John Keefe hopes this new technology will collect data about the water quality. The main goal is just to find out whether or not this is possible. This is brand new wiring and technology. The technology is pretty solid, but 
putting it all together this way inside a bottle and then inside a river is not okay, something that has been done a lot. The sensors test for differences in water temperature and conductivity to try to find polluted areas that may be unsafe for people and animals. The six sensors are closed in bottles, tied to a rope, and attached to cinder blocks that way they stay protected and in place when released into the water. The Stream Lab project is comprised of Reed College of Media students, professors, and two outside media innovators who spend countless hours making an idea come to life. Until uh, now, uh, the project has really been more or less theoretical. I mean, we've had a couple of deployments where we've tested it a little bit but uh, nothing like this. Once released, the sensors text live data every 10 to 15 minutes from three locations along the river. If it doesn't work, that's great. We learn from that. We learn from everything. The Streamlab team encourages the public to share their project and findings. Alyssa Aquavella, WVU News, Morgantown. If you would like to get involved with the project, you can visit the website or keep up with the results and learn about the quality of your drinking water using hashtag WVU Streamlab. Thanks, Audrey. A new tradition at WVU has students camping out and giving back. Sports reporter Caroline Peters pitches her tent in Tent City to show you why this tradition is here to stay. I'm Caroline Peters, and straight ahead on WVU News, I'll tell you how a group of students have created a new tradition right here at WVU. Every journey starts with a first. How will you go first? Just like wearing gold and blue and singing country roads, pitching a tent is on its way to becoming another WVU tradition. Sports anchor Joe Lipovich is here to explain why the tents are back. Joe? This is the second year students have participated in Tent City, WVU student-run City of Tents. While this event is backed by popular demand, this year it included a charitable aspect. In the week leading up to homecoming, campers pitched their tents on the mountain layer green. Caroline Peters explains how officials are proud of WVU students who raised money for awareness and charity. Last football season, groups of WVU students camped out in tents in anticipation of ESPN's college game day. Organizers felt that the event created a great atmosphere, so they decided to bring it back for homecoming. President Gee probably thought it was really awesome and wanted to do it again so we can like continue with that community. As you can see, I feel like it brings the school together because I've met different people in this tent in the area that I've never talked to, probably would have never met in my life because the school is so big. I'm here at Tent City and there are over 200 tents just like the one behind me right here on the Mountain Lair Green. What makes Tent City unique is it's all student run. This year, the students brought back the sense of community and expanded it to charity. This year, we just thought everybody would like to do the same thing. We had a pretty good response from, from people on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so we decided to kind of continue through it. And uh, when we started out, we wanted to do some community service as well. Uh, so we decided to, to start a charity campaign for Empty Bowls. Empty Bowls is a local organization that fights hunger. Students say giving back is a part of the Mountaineer spirit. The school mascot agrees. Tradition started after we do them repeatedly and after doing it last year and then the, uh, the same students that put it on last year kind of stepping up in leadership roles. It makes a lot of sense that this could be a tradition. I think the students look forward to it. Whether they are in a tent or cheering at the stadium, students say they're proud to be Mountaineers. Caroline Peters, WVU Sports, Morgantown. Tent City had a final count of 218 tents. The event raised $1,500, benefiting the organization Empty Bulls. Emily and Paige, back to you. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of WVU News. You can visit us online at our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube. And please follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Paige Madden. And I'm Emily Swecker. Thanks for watching WVU News. We'll see you next time.